The news can feel like watching a train wreck in slow motion, but every once in a while, there's a glimmer of something not so bad. Graduate students at a Mexican university have created El Chapo, the game, which features the former Sinaloa drug lord shooting down alien invaders and saving his real-life hometown, La Tuna. El Chapo Guzman was sentenced to life inside a Colorado Supermax prison and has already inspired plenty of narco content, including three seasons of a Netflix narco series. We must stop El Chapo before we lose control. A narco interview with Sean Penn, which he later regretted, they wanted to encourage the cartel to put you in their crosshairs. Yes. And a handful of narco documentaries. El Chapo se sentó al lado de mí. Iba yo asustadísimo. But this time the narco content isn't just fueling the fires of our obsession with the prefix narco. It's also doing some good. The students are using the proceeds to pay for school. And the rest of us get to fight intergalactic colonialism. COVID-19 has reportedly killed just 5,000 people in Romania, but one of them, Jan Aleman, died just 10 days before he was predicted to win re-election as mayor of Devasalu. But death couldn't keep the beloved mayor down. On election day, he still won in a landslide. Voters actually celebrated electing a dead man. As one resident told a local newspaper, they hope someone from his team will take over. Now the city council will choose a deputy mayor to run the town until the next election, which, good luck filling those shoes. The Trump administration has announced an update on their crusade to stop undocumented teenagers in custody from getting abortions. They're giving up the fight. Even as President Trump's nomination of Amy Coney Barrett seems to be a surefire threat to abortion rights, his administration is instead working with the ACLU to develop a new policy on abortion care in the Office of Refugee Resettlement's facilities. Even more strangely, it's paying the ACLU's legal fees for the court battle that the administration dragged out for three years. A 52-year-old woman's fight for her father's love has ended in victory, at least in court. After a very public three-year scandal, Delphine Bowell has, at least in name, earned legal recognition as a member of her birth family which just so happens to be the Belgian royal family. And now that royal family just so happens to owe Princess Boelle a royal inheritance when her estranged father dies. She says she doesn't expect to receive a warm familial welcome, but she may use her royal name to do charity work. 